All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. Hey y'all, welcome to another collaboration video with Real Talk Session Series and me, Juju Bay. We came to you with another video entitled Respect Your Roots. So we're gonna get all into ancestors, ancestor, not veneration because we did a video on that already. So you should check that out. Um, but we're gonna talk about who our ancestors are and why they are important to us. So our ancestors, who are they? Ancestors are the people that we descend from. So if you think your parents or your grandparents or great grandparents, if any of those people have passed on or transitioned, they would be considered your ancestors. Now you can also consider ancestors people that you are not quite related to. For example, there's collective ancestors like Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, these are people that we admire and look up to and venerate, but we may, or may, you could be, <laughs> but we may not be related to Harriet Tubman, but we still consider her a revered ancestor of all of ours. You can also consider your ancestors to be a sibling that may have passed, an aunt or uncle or a cousin, somebody in your family who you may have lost. You didn't necessarily descend from them as you do your parents or grandparents or great grandparents and so on and so forth, but they were still your family. So you can also consider them your ancestors. Now, in my opinion, I think that you consider anyone who you looked up to and loved in the physical realm an ancestor. They don't necessarily have to be related to you by blood. Some of us create family with our friends and we have other loved ones who we may not technically be blood related to, but we still honor them, we respect them, and we miss them after they transition. So they can also be considered your ancestors too. It really just depends on who you're asking and maybe what lineage you come from. Now, depending on your lineage and who you ask, ancestors aren't necessarily the people that you're related to that have died or passed on. Ancestors are really the people that we look up to, that we want to reach out to, that we call on to help us and bless us in our lives. Sometimes we have people in our lineage or who we descend from who weren't good people. They didn't live good lives. They didn't do good things while they were living. And depending on your lineage, some people would not consider that person an ancestor. Sometimes it's about living a good life, people that were well-respected individuals. So those people may just be considered dead, <laughs> but it depends who you ask. Now, we venerate, when we do venerate our ancestors, when we call on them, it's because they have the ability to bless us. They're able to kind of see what's going on in our lives and assist us and give us guidance. They give us a roadmap when we're not always able to see. So for example, an old therapist of mine told me this story to help me understand the importance of ancestors. And she practiced Orisha tradition, so she was a priest of the Orishas. So she said, you know, when blessings come into our lives as human beings, our ancestors are the ones that open the door to allow them to enter our lives. So if you have a child, for example, say you have a, a six-year-old walking and you run into me and I see your cute little six-year-old and I'm like, hey, I want to give your six-year-old a piece of candy. So I just go and give your six-year-old a piece of candy. I don't ask you. I don't ask permission from the adult there. I don't ask you if I can give your six-year-old candy. I just start giving them things. You would probably side eye like, you know, we wouldn't do that. I would ask the parent, I would ask the guardian, hey, can I give little... Shaniqua this month, this candy. Uh, so that's the same way that our ancestors are for us. So when other spirits, when we have blessings surrounding us, the blessings have to go through our ancestors, just like I would have to go through you in order to give your child some candy. So we want the candy. So we want to appease our ancestors. We want to make them happy in the spiritual realm so that we can get all the blessings that we need. Now, again, you can check out the ancestor veneration video where we talked about building altars because I talked about that a little bit there. But I do want to say when calling on your ancestors, as I mentioned before, you want to call on the ones that are going to be a help to you, that will better your life, that can assist you in whatever issue that you're going through. So you may not want to call on someone in your family who 
caused havoc, <laughs> for example, or who was always disrespectful. If you're trying to get something positive to happen in your life, you may not call on that person. You may not even consider them an ancestor. So it really depends on what you want, what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do, and that'll kind of help you decide, is this an ancestor I should be calling on? But overall, you can always just say, I want to reach out to my honorable ancestors or I'm calling on my benevolent ancestors right now. You could also say my ancestors that are in alignment with my highest good. I'm asking for your help. I want to speak to you. I want to build a relationship with you. I hope that was helpful y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to another educational video with me, Juju Bay, and Real Talk Session series. Don't forget to subscribe to A Little Juju Podcast on all streaming platforms as well as the Miseducation of the People podcast. And don't forget to go to the Real Talk Session series merch store, get you some merch because proceeds go towards producing educational videos such as these. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video if it was helpful for you, share it with your, with your family and your friends, and check out some of our other videos that we have coming. Thank y'all for tuning in, and remember to respect your roots. All you need is a little juju. Later.